Hi, my name is Lucas Deal, and this is my remix of Andrew Huang's song, Oblivion. The first thing I did when starting this remix is actually I transcribed all the melodies and the chords to really get them into my noggin, and I loved this one. I just love that melody, and it only happens once in the original song, and I just thought it was nice and needed a little bit more attention. And so I basically just started exploring that melody as many ways as possible, uh, including uh, making like a weird 8-bit version. And making a weird jazz, weird jazz, making weird jazz about it. And um, obviously you can tell reharmonizing uh, the melody was kind of the main thing that I did. Um, so it was this whole thing was really kind of ex an exploration of that one melody with some interpolations, you might say, some interruptions from other stuff. Let's talk through the instruments first, starting, I guess, at the bottom with the drums. The drums are mostly just the drums from the track that I chopped and put into a drum rack. And here they sound like this. I did add a ride cymbal and some crashes, but other than that, they're just the drums from the track. Next is the bass. I used the uh, Brainworks Oberhausen plugin, which is a copy of the Oberheim, and it just sounds awesome. So, so chunky and good. One thing that I did is I made a macro control for the bass so that I could just automate one thing uh, for intensity. And that macro knob is automating the filter frequency, the filter resonance, as well as another more different macro knob that controls this multi-band saturation, Combinat DVA. But this macro knob is controlling a couple things on the Combinat DVA. The drive amounts on the mid and low, as well as the frequency on this wavy thingy on the low band. So. So I just have a knob that I can turn when I want the bass to be scrungy. Next up, we have the main synthesizer sound, which I have named the final Andrew because the synth part is made from the vocal. This was actually the first thing that I made. I just piled up a bunch of Andrew Huangs on top of each other. Just made a pile of Andrews. This is just one note. I think it's an A flat. They got kind of breathy crazy. And so I used a little bit of EQ and stuff and compression to get rid of the scriggliness with it. Just a big old A flat. And without uh, the EQ to sort of isolate that A flat, it sounds like this. Which is kind of cool, but it, it wouldn't have worked for a, a synthesizer. So I sort of flattened all that down and slapped that into a sampler and then we get the synthesizer sound. I am modulating a couple things. There's a random LFO going to the detune to get a little bit of naturalness. And then also to the volume as if it were a real instrument and it sort of behaved unpredictably. Also from the expression control MPE device, I'm taking the key track um, output of that and I have it on an auto filter so that when you play a high note, the filter closes a little bit. And when you play a low note, the filter opens because without it, the high notes were maybe a little bit spicy just like not ideal. And so just tame that a little bit. And then um, I have the velocity of the expression control going to a saturator. So when you play harder and softer is less saturated. So 
That's kind of nice to give it a little bit of life. And then that is layered with a Rhodes because I love the Rhodes. And the Rhodes has a uh, Guitar Rig 6 on it with the Twing Reverb amp, which I think is just a Fender amp. And that's got a little bit of fuzz on it. Well, not fuzz, the pedal, fuzz, saturation. Together they sound like... Nice. One of the parts of the original song that I love the most is that arpy bit in the middle with um, the opal synth, um, but I don't have the opal synth, and so I tried to recreate the kind of vibe of that sound with vital because it's free. And it's not the same, but it's similar enough that I think the vibe is there. So let's talk about this patch. It's two layers of basically the same thing, but they're an octave apart. So we have kind of an in-between saw square wave as the first oscillator. And the second oscillator is a sine wave with the inharmonic shifty thingy on it. The random source is doing a lot of work here. So it's going to the, oh, and there's a third oscillator, which uh, is used as an FM source for oscillator one. And so the random is modulating the filter as well as the FM amount. I also uh, made a macro control for it that increases the FM, it opens the filter, and it increases the decay time so that I can turn one knob and have something that builds tension. And then the second voice is like unto it, but slightly different. Again, two oscillators and one third sine wave for FM source, um, except it's an octave down. So we have the same square saw blend, and then we have the same rounded, rounded square wave. And those are both being FM'd. So this time, no inharmonic shifty thingy. But the random is still doing some stuff. It's changing the filter and it's changing the FM amounts. Oh, and I forgot the, <laughs> it's like going back in time and seeing what someone else did. The envelope is also uh, affecting the FM amount on oscillator two. And then with the expression control MPE device, I have a fire here, which is a multi-band distortion saturator, and it is randomly changing the drive. So some of them really pop. Nice. Kind of sounds like one of those PVC pipe slappy instruments. I dig it. Okay, so that is the ARP sound. I love an ARP. I do have the original keyboard part in this middle sort of B section, which fades up. And I put an erosion as well as drum bus without any saturation, but just the transients so that it sounds more like a percussion thing. So next we have the tenor saxophone sound. Can you believe it? This is a tenor saxophone. Here it is just by itself. It's layered with the original Matrix Brute sound. So the key to the success of this weird tenor saxophone thing is the isotope vocal synth. I mean, saxophone is not vocals, but it might as well be. And so it's doing vocoding and this CompuVox sort of bit crushy thingy and a little bit of distortion. And also the wet signal is in there as well as there's another one of those multiband distortion combinat DVA thingers doing a little bit of stuff. And then I have an envelope follower on the dry side of the signal chain, which is just modulating a bunch of stuff. It's modulating the shift of the vocoder, the level of the CompuVox section of the synth, um, as well as the shape of the CompuVox here. And there you go, that's what that's that. And then in the solo section underneath the main tenor saxophone, I added sort of a an echo layer. <laughs> which um, is ducked by the original tenor saxophone using envelope follower and I didn't know this until recently and so I'm just so excited. But you can put an envelope follower or even an LFO on one track and then modulate something else. I had no idea. And so I'm using that to duck the echoey saxophone when the main saxophone is loud. Nice. 
Nice. And the, and the echoes are on the, just the completely dry signal. Actually, I should show you the, the completely dry version without the synth. One thing I think that it is neat about the isotope vocal synth is actually when it gets a little bit confused. <laughs> so like on this note, it, it's just not sure what octave I'm playing. And so you kind of get like a, like it's playing low and I'm playing high and you kind of get a split tone effect, which I think is kind of neat. Um, and sometimes it makes little frog noises when you pause. Okay, that's the tenor. Let's do the Game Boy part at the beginning. This is like total nostalgia bait, but also, uh, <laughs> okay, I heard this sound and I like literally teared up. Oh, so nostalgic. I played so much Advance Wars. Okay, for these Game Boy sounds, we have just a bunch of Sora Boys, which is a free plugin. So they each have a different setting on the Sora Boy to kind of get a variety of sounds, like it's an ensemble rather than it's just like one thing. Um, so we have that one. And then this one. Nice. And then this one. Fun. And then the bass. Which does actually have a filter on it. Because... It's just maybe a little too spicy for a bass. The snare drum. Ha! Huh. And then the... They all have Redux and EQ on them to kind of make them sound old, but that those two effects gradually fade out. So the Redux fades from wet to dry and the scale of the EQ goes to zero um, to kind of generate the feeling of immersion. So let's hear that. And also, you, as you can hear, the other not Game Boy sounds gradually start to fade in, like the real bass and the... Level up! Next, let's chat about the vocals. I almost didn't put the vocals in because my chords were so weird. More on that later. But in the middle section where the chords are ex actually exactly identical um, to the original track, I thought they would work fine and they did. Basically, I just chopped a bunch of stuff and these two, so these two are twice as long, but it's the same high part. And one of them comes from the right, one of them comes from the left, and they kind of come to center. And they are layered with each other so that there's kind of a little bit of harmony, which is kind of nice, which was kind of a happy accident, actually. A little bit of a crunch for a second. It's nice. And then there's some chops. Kind of intense. This Andrew has a lot of stuff on it. So there's a redux and the rate of it is being modulated by a random LFO as well as a filter. Yeah, and it's just echo and a little bit of the disperser effect with this all pass filter by Air Windows. It's the same as disperser, except it's free. Yeah, and echo. And they stack together um, in kind of a nice way. In context.
So the last layers we have here are just little rise and falls, which are from the track. Well, I didn't really do anything to most of these, except one of them. This riser here is made from that same rising vocal. Sounds like this. Nice. And the main thing that's happening here is I am modulating uh, an erosion to be more and a uh, delay to be different. A little bit of M said to take it out of the middle and put it into the side. Let's quickly talk about these chords. Andrew made a video about this chord, which uh, I love this chord. Um, it's two major chords on top of each other, D flat and E flat. Um, and so this weird chord kind of sent me down the weird chords direction. <laughs> and I ended up uh, with some interesting chord progressions. So the, the main thing that's interesting about the chords that I wrote is that it's based around a minor third axis progression. If you know Giant Steps, uh, Giant Steps is a major third axis progression. Chords that are major thirds are part, uh, but mine is minor thirds. D flat, E major. D major and B flat. And those are the main sort of ingredients for the chords. But the ingredient that I added after that is to play some or all, some or all or most or whatever of these chords in an inversion so that the bass isn't just doing the same thing over and over because I started to get tired of that. For example, if you take the same sequence of chords, but then change the root notes, the bass notes, I mean. You get a descending bass line with these funny chords. The next step after that is to not just play them as triads, like vertically, uh, to actually voice lead correctly so that the chords lead one into the other. whatever. So that's kind of the main idea behind most of the chord progressions. I don't want to bore you with going through every single one of them, but just know that the idea was, hey, these chords are neat, but the bass motion is awkward. So let's put the chords into inversions so that the bass motion is not awkward anymore. So let's hear an example of that, actually. So here's a good example. I'll put the chords on the screen because I can't remember what they are <laughs> off the top of my head. Hopefully you can hear, we kind of travel through those key centers, D flat, E, uh, G, and B flat, but the bass does it in a way that is more pleasing than just the, the minor thirst. I hope that comes across as how I made it to. Well, it was a real great opportunity to uh, attempt this remix. Um, I tried a lot of things that challenged me, including playing in seven very fast. <laughs> And so thanks for the challenge, Andrew. And uh, it's been such a fun experience to take raw material from someone like Andrew and try to make it my own thing. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, this is my remix. Here it goes. <laughs> 